everyone and welcome back to 3D Print Lab. Today we'll be printing a video game model. We'll be printing the Turin Battle Cruiser. Phase 1 is location. Turin Battle Cruiser is within the StarCraft 2 universe. Phase 2 is extraction. So we're going to go ahead and open up the Cask Viewer, CASC. It's no longer the MPQ archive that you get into. Blizzard decided to update the file system with the latest version of StarCraft 2. So we'll be using CAS from now on. Then we're going to go ahead and import the M3 into 3DS Max. And we're only going to import what we need. We're not going to import um, things like the ribbons or the attachments. We don't need that. Once it's imported, we're going to start coordination. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure that everything is one single geometry. There wasn't any broken geometry on this model that had to be fixed. I would assume that this is because it's something that's flying and you're going to see all angles so they weren't able to cheat any polygons out of this geometry. Unlike any of the vehicles, land units, or especially the buildings, anything that's touching or facing the ground doesn't exist. And you have to go back, and you have to bridge all those faces and make geometry yourself. With this model, that wasn't an issue. I'm just going to go ahead and scale it up to the size of the scale cube, of which I try to print everything the same size as the scale cube. So here we see it being sliced off. We're going to use this view to determine where we're going to need supports, what's going to be necessary. And it turned out one of the main things we needed to do is actually print this floating up off the bed. I don't know why I couldn't get it to actually sit flat. It didn't matter what I did. There was always just this weird space. So we decided to just go ahead and print it everything a little bit elevated. So we're going to go ahead and get our obelisk support with the spacing discs and go ahead and start building our manual support. So we're just going to go ahead and put it everywhere where we think we're going to need it. The biggest thing would be to put it on all of the perimeters of anything that's going to build. You don't have to have it absolutely everywhere. We just need to make sure that when it's laying down the plastic, that each point basically is supported. Outer shell points. So basically if you had like a, a box you're printing, you do each corner. If you had a circle, you do maybe eight points around the edge of the circle, or for these I'm doing four. But you wouldn't do the entire thing. Because it can actually... The machine I use can actually bridge things pretty well. The problem it has is when it tries to print out in midair and there's nothing there, then that doesn't work with the troops and it looks like garbage. You can, however, print out in midair if you're going to go at an angle. You can go up to, I think it's about a 15 degree angle, and it'll print just fine. And that's one of the major bases behind how much and where I put my support as I look for angles that will print. And anything that's below 15 degrees, like the sides of this battle cruiser, need to be supported. Now, perhaps this part doesn't need to be supported because it is 15 degrees, but the thing is, is that even if it's going to print and be supported, it might be too heavy and cause the rest of the print to fall over and fail. So in a way you need to over support and have extra support just to hold the model up, not so much to support it but to hold it together. So we're looking here and trying to figure out where else we're going to need support. Only half of the support will be generated within 3ds Max, the rest of it will be generated inside of Mesh Mixer. It's a lot easier to go ahead and generate angled support within Mesh Mixer 
but generating everything inside a mesh mixer would be a little tedious. So I really, I, I've stricken a balance between 3S Max and Mesh Mixer as to what each program is really useful for when it comes to building support. One of the major breakthroughs I, I'd say though is um, being able to do the gap support. I always thought for a long time that if I was able to force delamination by having a one space gap, it would work very well. And that's exactly made a huge difference. I don't even know if it's one layer. It could be up to two or three layers. But it really works well. I don't think you want to go past one layer though. Because then nothing will be like sticking to your support. Nothing will be like there to hold it actually up. And the printhead will literally just come over and knock the whole thing off the plate. So we're checking here to make sure that the support is going to support everything it needs to support. And it looks pretty good, except for we're going to change the raft a little bit, which is the platform that everything builds on and holds everything together. Now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to bowline everything together, make it all one geometry. So it's going to add everything to a group and then bowline it to the bottom. Of the support. There we go. And we're gonna export that off. Now we're inside of Mesh Mixer. And we have all of the support complete, but not all of it is touching the plate. So we're going to now go ahead and add the supporting structure that supports the primary support. It's really nice in Mesh Mixer because you can just drag these connections out instead of trying to rotate everything manually with inside of 3ds Max. Just making sure that everything is supported. Once again, over supporting a little bit just to make sure that it's not going to fall over during printing. And if it falls over, then you've just lost a couple hours of print time and material. It's really not worth trying to cut corners because then you'll lose even more time. Even with this build, I had to print this thing twice because it didn't come out right. Phase 4 is conversion. I'm just going to be checking to make sure that it is going to print. And you'll see that each layer comes up and everything that needs to be supported is supported. Phase 5 is production. It took 2 hours and 50 minutes and consumed 14 grams of polylactic acid, PLA plastic, biodegradable corn based plastic. And you can see that it's kind of stringy. And that's because the teal material I used is supposed to be printed at 200 degrees Celsius. I actually printed it at 230. So that's my fault. It's supposed to print it at 200. It's, it's kind of weird because I only have two materials, orange and teal, that need to be printed at 200. Sometimes I forget. Oh well. The support was rolling anyway, so it was a good excuse for me to print it again. So we're going to go back through and we realize that we actually did miss this section of the tailpiece of the ship. So we're going to go through and support that. And we're going to go ahead and bullying everything together again. Export it off. And back into Mesh Mixer. And once again we're just going to add all that support. And once again, adding more support than necessary so that it will not fall over. I kind of think of it this way, you're trying to save five minutes or you're trying to save three hours. 
And at the end, saving the three hours is probably in your best interest. Alright, making sure that everything is connected here. Now we're just going to be checking the inside of the Max. And it looks like we did actually miss one little portion. So we'll go ahead and fix that. It's always good to check your support within MakerWare. This helps a lot. Even if you don't use a MakerBot printer, you can still put your files through MakerWare and check layer by layer. And actually, I had an issue with it exporting. Some of the geometry was getting distorted, so I actually had to export out as an OBJ and then bring it back into 3ds Max and then S export an STL. I don't know why something happened to Mesh Mixer. Whatever. It took 2 hours and 52 minutes, a little bit longer, and consumed 15 grams of PLA. So there's a little bit more support material. But. This red was printed at 230 degrees Celsius, and it's not all stringy because this material can handle that temperature. And there you go. So we're off to degrigging, which is removing all of the support material from the bottle. So we're going to start with the teal one, ripping off the raft first, and just slowly getting rid of all the support material. It all comes off pretty easy. That gap that we left between the support material and the model now comes into play. The ease of de-rigging really comes down to all of your prep work. And if you did it right, then it will only take a minute or two to take all the support material off. And if you do it wrong, you'll have to get the Dremel tool out and then it will look like garbage and you'll probably throw it away and start over anyway. Once again, trying to save five minutes by doing automatic support is going to cost you hours later. So you might as well just do it manually and correctly the first time around. Now, don't get me wrong, there's probably automatic support out there that's great. I've never found it. I still haven't found it. And even if it is, does it really come off? Does it come off quickly and easily? That's what I want to know. And does it leave a bunch of stuff behind? And until I can find automatic support that's easy to remove, faster to remove than my support, and takes, you know, less support material, and less material than what I'm using, I'm not going to switch over from building it manually. Now, someone will probably do it, but I, I've never, I haven't found it. You always get support material in places where you don't need it. Yeah, you can see it's pretty rough, really stringy. Actually broke one of the gun turrets. So now the red one. I'm gonna go ahead and derig it. Actually a little bit faster because I realized on the last build that some of the support was a little bit too dense. So I separated it into separate pieces. There's a couple pieces that kind of got a little too close to the model itself. But when it comes to de-rigging, you really just kind of want to take your time and not break anything. But it's not too difficult. I'm almost done, just kind of using the tweezers here to clean it up a little bit. A little, few little things left. And there we go, it's complete. And here it is sitting next to its pile of support material. And there it is, in all this glory. There's it standing up. There's it from the back, and upside down. And there it is again. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. I will see you next time.